Hello everybody and welcome to episode 4 of our um, Wakefield to Nottingham Review Building series. Today we're going to be doing some signalling work around Calder Bridge Junction and the Wakefield area. Uh, just as we said in episode 3, we've done some work around Croft and West Junction. We've laid the track towards Nottingham, it actually just ends just outside Nottingham now. But now we need to come back and we need to do some more signalling work. So we're starting off here, Calder Bridge Junction, we're going to dive straight in. Um, we've got a signal to place just there that you can see on Google Maps. That signal protects the Calder Bridge Junction itself. Um, and what it is, is it's just a simple four aspect signal that links up to that track ahead of us. So it's going to be, all we're doing is we're linking to that track up there past those crossovers. And um, we'll explain why that is in a second. So it's just going to be a 1T uh, four aspect LED signal that we're placing. So to do that we need to go up here to the, not the GAN GTY, the, the GTY ones, they're gantry signals, we don't want a gantry signal. Um, we want a LED 4 aspect 1 link signal, 1T signal. So just turn it around, place it facing the right way. You need to get the link for the initial link, just past the signal, a couple of metres. AI trains by the way, when they, they will stop a few metres short of the initial link that you placed there. Uh, they'll probably stop around here somewhere. They've got like a 10 meter sort of, 10-15 uh, meter sort of leeway on them. I'll just place it just past the signal. And then link 1, we need to place it where the furthest away point that we're going to be controlling is. So we need to place it past that junction, because we're going to obviously check in if there's anything coming past this junction. But the next signal is right up there. So we've also got to place it past this junction as well, because if you placed it in there, the signal wouldn't then detect whether a train was going to come across this crossover and crash into you. You need to place it past all the junctions leading up to the next signal to, fill the co to fulfill the control check from that signal. So what this will do by placing the link there, where we've just placed it, it'll do its first check will be, is there anything coming across this junction, or is the junction actually set in the first place? And if the answer starts no, it'll stay red. If the answer starts yes, it'll say, okay, can we get right to the actual first link, which is this one. And if this junction's set against the train, or there's a train in the section to the next signal, it'll stay red. But if this junction's set for our train, and the section ahead is clear, there's nothing in it, then it'll turn to yellow or green. So basically, all you need to do is make sure that if you're placing signal links, you place it past any interfering junctions that would affect um, the operation of that signal. So this signal is WK and it's 1189. So we place that, we don't need to do anything with that box because it's already set. It's just a simple one track link signal. Uh, we need to get our TPWS ramp next for this signal. Because I can see from the CAV video that it has got one. Generally speaking, pretty much all junction signals do have TPWS ramps. We're going right through the wrong part of the assets list here. Um, TPWS, there we are. Holding tab, just place it next to the signal, then hold shift to make sure the arrow goes in the correct direction. So the arrow needs to be pointing in the direction that trains will pass over it. Place that, then place the actual ramp down into the track so it's not floating. And then what we need to do is get our AWS ramp placed. Remembering that it has to be 180 meters before the signal, so we select the select tool, put it next to the signal, and go around here to 180 meters away from uh, the signal itself. It's getting a bit difficult with the various lofts and stuff, so it's a bit funny then when it was uh, connected up. Just going to remember to put my TPWS ramp in the favorites list there so I can easily grab it. Same with the AWS ramp. And if I hold tab with this one, because the track direction is set initially to go the other way, but it's actually set to both, but it's figured that it wants to go the other way, I can't snap it to the track, so I'm just going to manually rotate it and the other place there, because it's figured out which way the ABS ramp is facing. So that's placed. So that signal all wired up correctly. What I said I would show in the last video as well is that we've now got the signal plates showing. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a texture thing with these JT ones where the W, for whatever reason, seems a little bit wide. That's a shame. Um, I doubt we'll be any fix for that, to be honest. But yeah, maybe I can 
put a line in the middle there, no. So obviously what that is, is it's chopping off the W texture. There's nothing you can really do to stop that, sadly. Which is a, a bit of a, a nuisance, but we'll have to live with it. So there is another signal adjacent to the one we've just placed. That's on the Calder Bridge to wait for Kurgate line. Same type of signal once again, so it's literally the exact same signal. So it's an L4A, it's a 1T signal. And I've placed it on the track there just because I snapped it to the track, but I'll move it to the left in a second. So we've set that one there. All I need to do now is just drag it off the track, so obviously I uh, can't leave it there. Move it down onto the bow shoulder. And then place the TPWS ramp once again. This one's actually facing the correct way straight away. And once again, then we need to put the AWS ramp in back around this curve. One thing we will be putting into this route, even though it's short these days, because the track starts to the left there, is the Cobra Steelworks, the former site of. That was in there. The track goes down, it's just under the terrain at the minute, but Google Maps still shows it. So that's where there used to be a steel train used to go to, I think it used to go to Bescott or somewhere around that way until the early 2000s, there was a, a 47 turn I think most of the time. Um, sadly that depot actually has seen no traffic since then but it's still worth putting in because it's there still in real life even if it's not used. Uh, I'm just looking at the next signals, there's a K1193 signal showing Oh, I haven't put the ooh, bad mark. I haven't put the uh, identification in for this one. This one's K one one nine. Oh, I forgot some. Um, K one one nine one. So actually, that one we just placed a minute ago doesn't have the W either. We put a W on this one, and for whatever reason, these ones have kept the old number, the old name style, which was K not WK, which was what those ones further up have, so it's a, an interesting little quirk. So there's a ground signal somewhere on this section, there it is, and this is K, um, 1193, and that controls movements literally just over these points, because there's another one then between uh, just before that crossover I believe or oh, around that area I'm just going to check on my cab ride exactly where the next ground signal should be after that and it's just by that crossover an interesting little location actually that to be honest um, so let's get this one placed I'm just going to place a one link because it's it's in a really weird spot. The, the next one's sort of like by the points, literally on the points. It's unclear exactly what bit it's supposed to be signaling, to be honest. Um, I would suspect it's signaling this junction from this side, but the signal's actually further than it should be up there for some reason. But uh, oh well. So we place that one in. That again is K1193. And that'll just stay in there. The next one, as I said, it's in a weird location. The link for it should probably be, I suspect, is further back here. And I'm actually going to place it back here because I don't feel like, even though it is actually up there, I feel like it's more sensible to have it back here in train sim terms because you're going to be something crashing into something if you're not careful. Um, because of the way AI works and stuff. So this is a free link signal. I'm going to link to all three of these tracks. Uh, and this is signal K1195. Now signal 1, link 1 will probably be the most sensible one to have as the main line 2 and 3. And we've picked a stencil indicator one, so it's got a little root indicator actually on top of it. I'm just going to drag it across to the far side. So that we can uh, drop it down. 
to there. And I do have a diagram, actually. I believe tells me what that signal... I haven't quite got that far, but... Uh, this box, what it should say in it. So it's K1195, once again. Um, and in terms of signal numbers... Oh, sorry, the uh, letters that go on the box. That's the down line on the left, the up line on the right, and that's the loop. So we're going to put a D for the down line, an up, U for the up line, and an L for the loop. I mean, in theory, Wakefield London is actually that way, because you can access London via hair part going that way. But because this was a L and Y view, it actually sets the up direction is to Manchester, not to London. So is this is the one on the right is the up goal, the one on the left is the down goal. Um, logic would tell you it would be the other way around, but uh, weirdly it's not. I suspect that's probably to London Euston or somewhere. I don't know. Maybe it's just set to Manchester. I don't know what the uh, actual setting was for that, but I just know it's the opposite way around to what it would normally be uh, thought of as being. So we've got that signal in next. Uh, there's actually a f signal facing back the other way, somewhere around this uh, where the river is. Uh, I think it's opposite the way the goods loop exit. Looking at the video, it's opposite this point here, K1190, and it's got available from it three routes. So let's have a look what routes they'll be. I would suspect it'll be to the one on the left yeah I suspect it'll be for these three so that one that one and then the line around to Turner's Lane is how I suspect it will go although I don't actually know that I can't see that on any of my diagrams. I think in train sim terms um, the most sensible thing is probably to set it up as a four track even though in real life it's only a three and that is because if someone in a scenario decides they want to go down that line but I've wrongly assumed that it's this one they won't be able to do it, it won't be signalled so we'll put in a four track one uh, and just play it sensible And unfortunately this is a, an issue, depending on your signal diagrams that you can get, is that uh, older signal diagrams certainly do tell you the stuff that you get in route indicators and stuff like that. Unfortunately I've got really new signal diagrams which don't actually give me what's in these boxes, it just tells me that there's three routes that are available from that signal. Um, and signal diagrams are one of those things where if you've got them, you've got them, if you haven't, you haven't sort of thing. You can't just cancel a route if you've not got the exact right one in my opinion. I think it's getting a bit silly if you start worrying about stuff like that. So I'll set the one to be a C. That's Cobra works. We'll just set that as a C. Cobra sidings. Two, I know that is actually the G. So that's an up goal but it comes up as a G on the thing. Three is D. I think it is anyway. Let's have a look. Uh, I have actually got a diagram that tells me these things. Uh, K1230. Sorry, that's platform three that one comes up as when it's further. There's another signal actually down there, so we'll set that one to down. So I'll set it as a D. And then link four goes around to Turner's Lane, so I'll actually set that as a T for Turner's Lane. And uh, it's a shame that I don't have the actual letters up, but uh, that's the way development is sometimes. So we've got that one in now. Next up we need to get the two junction signals in that are placed by the loop. Now these signals have got a feather um, and a ground signal and a call and on indicator on them as well. So the main aspect light will point down there, the feather will point down that one and the shunt indicator will be set for there. And these signals are somewhere around the goods loop ending should I check the cab view for exactly where they are so they're placed 
right where the other line starts to come in from the left there. You can just sort of see on the indicator, on the uh, map, sorry. So again, this is an L4 signal. It's going to be a 3T F1C. LED 4 aspect. Link First link in front, the initial link. The main route is this one through to Turner's Lane. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got that wrong, haven't I? I think. Let's have a look. Just trying to work out where the next signal is. No, there is another signal by the... St there's actually another signal just before that crossover as well. Because I was wondering if this one might actually control traffic into Kirkwood Station, which is there. But it doesn't. It only controls traffic just past these points. So, one, because that's the main route. And then two, we'll put there on the side in. And three, we'll put for the diversion route round to Ernest Lane Junction. And that leads towards the Notting, the, uh, the Normanton line, uh, and eventually leads as well. So we've got this signal put in here. This number is K1192. So we'll get a Y on the two link because that's going to be the side in, and it'll tell the route indicator, uh, the calling on indicator, to light up for that route. We'll set it to limited aspect so it doesn't like give you a green light or something like that. One needs nothing because it's the main route. And three. Oh, hold on, I've put the wrong signal in. What a burp. I've put a left feathered one in. And that's how easy it is to cock up. It's a uh, 3T F4C, not F1C, because we want the indicator to go to the right. We put the F4C in. One link there, two link there, three link over there. We'll just try this again. K, okay. 1192, signal link one. Still doing it wrong. Signal link two has the Y for the colon on indicator, and that's got the limited aspect set. So all that Y does when you put it in any box of these um, JT signals is it just tells the calling indicator to come on. You can use an additional yard box as well to control them as, as also um, a slightly more complicated stuff which I may go into if I need to at some stage on these videos of this route. Uh, and then we get a 4 for the junction over there to the right. And again, it's on a limited aspect. So you should get a double yellow as you're approaching that one. Um, next up, get the TSS TPWS ramp placed. And then we're going to put the AWS ramp um, once again 180 metres back behind the signal. A bit too far there. Place that like so. Notice I've just moved it off by accident. Drop it down. So that's that signal placed. The next one is the one that's uh, sat right next to it is K1194 and it actually it is the exact same signal, just uh, that it's on the loop rather than on the main. So again that's an, L F, uh, an L4A free link F4 signal with a corn on indicator. You can place it there. One link on the main, two link on the siding, three link on the Turner's Lane curve. That's K1194. Nothing in the one box, a Y in the two box, and a four, and limited aspect in the three box. And again, as I said in the original, in the first couple of videos, that four refers to the feather, which is number four feather, uh, which is top right, and the three of the box is the link on the outside line that we want that feather to light up on. So again, we need to place a TPWS ramp. And then we need to place the AWS ramp as well, 180 metres away, back up the track. Now 
can go just here. So we're getting there with the signals now. We've got some more ground signals to place, I believe. I'm um, just consulting the diagram once again. So we've got ground signals back up at the far end of this um, loop. This would be for run around procedures, I presume. And these are level with that signal there. As far as I'm aware, I'm just loading up the cab video once again. I think they might be a little bit further up, sort of, sort of thing. Looking at it, yeah, they are. They're around this bit. So we're just going to pull the terrain up to make it easier to place them. It's going to bring the terrain up to track level. We can always reset that later when we actually come to focus on the terrain itself. A lot of people do do the terrain whilst they're doing the track. Um, and sometimes I do as well, but it's not something I get too um, worked up about. I prefer to focus on that as I'm starting the scene of it, to be honest. I just find it uh, easier and more focused for me. I find if I do it all at the same time with the track, I can end up rushing it a little bit. So from this signal, there's two routes available. And those two routes, uh, I just need to check what the next signal is on the diagram, actually, will help. So the two routes that are available are this one and the curve, I do believe. So these are two aspects, they're not preset reds, preset reds will come on regardless of if you're actually shunting right from them, they'll be on before you get to them, whereas a red will stay red until there's actually a route needing to be set for a shunt manoeuvre. And they've got stencil indicators on them, these signals. Place there. One link we'll put on the inside curve, two link we'll put on the outside curve. And this is signal WK8211. And then for link number one, we want in the box, in this uh, theta box, this center indicator. Link number one is on the down line, so we want the down uh, D to appear. And link number two, at the moment it's on that line, I feel it should probably be on the uh, inside one, although it's hard to say, really. We'll leave it on the outside one and we'll put a zero, an O in there, sorry, not a zero. And that will be appearing for Oakenshaw. Same again on this side. And these signals are actually really rarely used these days, I guess, because nothing much goes up to run around in this loop. In the in the old days, in the like in the MGR era, coal trains they used to run around coal trains and stuff in this loop, but nowadays obviously there's not really any need for it to be honest. Um, really all it gets used for is just looping freight trains occasionally. And this one is WK and it's 8223. And again, it's a D in there and an O in that one. Just gonna have a look if they have um, TPWS ramps. They don't have AWS ramps before those, but see if let's have let's see if they have um, TPWS ramps over them. I would show the cab view on the screen at the same time, but uh, it is a bought cab ride, so I can't do that. It's bought from uh, 225 Studios does excellent cab rides they are really helpful towards route builders this one is the Holbeck Junction to Ghoul empty stock then go to Leeds via Nottingley passenger service DVD it's a really good one actually quite an interesting one it's the only train of the day in the morning sorry that goes to Ghoul via Snaith and then there's one in the evening as well that goes from Leeds to Snaith and then there's a return journey back from Snaith as well uh, via, a ghoul via snave, sorry. I tried to talk and do videos at the same time, it's difficult. I keep cocking all my words up. Okay, so next signal. Um, it's actually a repeating ground signal for um, K1190, which is that one. But as far as I know, we don't have any repeating ground signals. It's not something I've ever really known, to be honest unusual 
So I can't really do that because I don't have the signal in the game. I, don't know, I doubt very much doubt that just the DTG ones would have a repeat of as well. And they don't, as far as I can tell. So that's obviously a, a limitation there. If it was a payway route to buy JT, we'd probably try and get that ground signal made. Um, but we don't have the facility outside of JT to do that, sadly. So that's something that won't be getting placed. So the next signal looking at the cab ride is just past these two crossovers that we can see in front of it behind the camera. There's a double crossover here, and there's one on the left hand line and the down line. And it's just past the crossover. It's level with the Oakenshaw Junction. So it's level with this bit here, just on the right hand side. And that one has available from it three different routes. Sorry, two different routes. And those two routes would be the loop and the upline. So we'll go to JT. GPLS red 2T uh, stencil indicator. It's going to be in the terrain up once again, like I did before, because it's getting really difficult to actually place these again. Set the one link into the sign to the loop and the two link onto the upline. One box will put an L. Two box will put a U, and the signal number is WK eight two one zero. So that's placed the signal for WK two eight two one zero. See what other ones we've got left to place in the area. We've got the KU one two three two, which was back towards Wakefield Kirkgate. Um, that one is down here somewhere. One hundred percent sure. There's an AWS ramp there, and from an AWS ramp, we should be able to measure one hundred eighty meters to a controlling signal. It should be on this curve here, and it's there. You can just see it on the map. So again, this will be a, a four aspect signal, and it has uh, it's K two one K one two three two, and it's uh, an, an LED four aspect signal, and it's a two T F four C because it's got the call on indicator once again. And all we're doing is we're going to place link one on the outside line, the loop, link two in the platform, and that's it. That's all we need to place for those two. Um, and then we need to set the signal up, obviously. Um, and the signal has the following settings. What's the thing? It's K1232. 1232. One, two, three, two. It's slightly to the left. Um, indicator, sorry, route number one, link number one, needs nothing on it because it's just the main line. Link number two has a four and has the limited aspect selected. Four is for the feather once again. Now if you want that call and on indicator to show, all you would do is if you were stopped here, let's say you've got a train parked to the platform, you just run around or something, or you're going to couple to something else, press tab and the shunt signal would, or at least should in theory, light up for you to uh, tell you the manoeuvre can be made. Put the TPWS ramp in once again. Drop that to the ground. I'm speeding up a little bit with some of these things because we've covered quite a lot of this stuff already in previous episodes. So if you're struggling a little bit to keep up with me, I would encourage you to watch episodes 1 and 2, uh, particularly because we've covered quite a lot of this in detail, uh, the AWS ramps and stuff in those early episodes and for people that have been watching all the episodes so far there's no point in me continuing to take it really slow with them 
when I've already explained them. Um, I will start explaining as we're going along every now and then as a reminder. So we place the AWS ramp really close to that point, set of points actually. So that's that signal set up. The final one on this section here is a ground signal that's um, just past here. We've got terrain on the track here. I think there's a crossover uh, that we still need to add as well. That should be here. Yeah, there's a crossover missing up there. So we're going to select the track tool. Note that I've changed the track wheel by accident there. So Manchester's the south port line. Track concrete is 01. So we press the crossover tool first. We'll try and do it with the tool. I don't think it'll work though, unfortunately. No, it's because we want to curve, we won't activate the tool. Turn off snap to terrain because otherwise you'll end up with your track snap to terrain instead of uh, actually laying it properly. You want to turn on um, snap to track so we can actually connect these points up. Just check where the gradient is. It's 1 in 1320 uphill and it changes to 1 in 219 right in the middle of there, which was bad, bad planning by me. Just going to see where exactly where that change is. We can move the points a little bit actually this way. So that's 1 in 220. And place it here. Set it to yard so you can make the points nice and sharp. Because they are a, a sharp set of points. And then there you go. Know that we've got the issue of the blocks points again, as we showed in episode one. Just get your snap uh, split tool between the two sets of points and just split it. Click the track, left click on your mouse. Then go to your weld tool and weld the grey box. You'll get a triangle in the middle to tell you you've done it. And your points will look nice and tidy with the uh, V shape in the middle. The ground signal that we're going to do, that's located just here somewhere. I don't know if you have to see it from Google to be honest. Can't really, but it, I know it's here somewhere. And again, that'll be a GPLS red signal. And it's got set from it two available routes with a stencil indicator. I actually know the code for this one, unlike some of the others. Uh, I actually know what appears in the box on this one because I have an older set of diagrams. Sometimes, what will happen as well, if you notice that the signals actually just decided to jump with me, all you need to do there is just drag it back to its original location. Um, oh, well, we've dragged the track with us. Uh, drag the signal back to the original location, just place it down, and it'll uh, be ready for use. So I know with this one, first of all we need to put the code in which is WK, or is it just K on this one? So it's K1 230. One is the inside track that has a G on it for the up ghoul and two has platform three for platform three. So there's a three in the box. Well, that church is appearing this far away. That church is up by it's about three miles away. Um went off on a bit of a tangent there. So we've got that set up. Now I'm not sure exactly how many signals left there is. There's the one zero side of Kurgus station that need to be put in yet. Uh, but we'll do those in a future episode. Uh, we're a good half hour into this episode now. 35 minutes, so... Seeing what else needs Okay, actually. so we're now back up at Crofton East Junction. We've finished most of the signalling stuff around Wakefield. We've got the West End of Kirkgate to do. But we've done pretty much everything else there is to do, signal-wise. We're at Crofton East, we've got the depot there. We did this bit of track here in episode 2, I think it was. Now we're going to have a look at this curve here from Crofton East, the Monk Breton branch. Uh, it's a four, 1 in 437 uphill just here, but I need to actually, I need to actually start at the 1 in 647 downhill gradient, because that's where the initial junction is. So I'll do that first, and the way to do that is to set this to track concrete 01, 
minus six four seven. We've already got two trucks selected, and I'm going to set it to passenger for this curve, so we can make it uh, tight enough for what it needs to be. It's about a twenty mile an hour turnout in real life. Just going to bring the uh, overhead overlay, sorry, uh, up so I can see onto it a bit better. I'm going to set the two tracks there where the point motor is, and we're going to gently take them across here. And we get to about here, we'll be able to actually put the correct gradient in, which is 1 in 437 uphill. Uh, and that gradient runs to 740 metres from this point. Again, we can't do super elevation on this curve because uh, we've just come off a junction. So we're coming around this curve. to relay that little bit there. And we're coming around to where the tail end of Crofton Depot actually is here. Now this curve, I don't know if this curve's super elevated or not to be honest, in real life. My gut feeling is that it isn't because it's on a pretty sharp curve. Um, I'm just going to go and check some photos and I'll oh, restart the video. I found a photo actually. The photo shows quite clearly it isn't super elevated. Um, and I suspect that's probably because of the fact that it used to be a junction for the Midland Main Line. And there wouldn't obviously have been super elevation on it. And it's a really slow curve also. Uh, makes no real sense. It's never been a passenger curve uh, particularly either. Uh, possibly in the odd diversion it might have been, but. It's pretty much always been a freight curve as this one. Um, just going to extend this straight a little bit more to there and start turning to this uh, straight. Just going to bring the terrain down like I did before when we were doing episode one, and I'm actually going to relay that little bit because I've messed up. And you see, I've gone off the actual. My far actually gone off the area where it is, I haven't quite. Let's see how it looks when I've done the rest of the curve and then we'll make a decision on whether I need to go back and um Yeah, I need to go back because it's not it's not gonna be a constant radius, it's gonna be like messed up radiuses in there. Let's go back to here and we'll redo it. That's because I tried to dig it too close to the terrain that that's happened. Put it on passenger again. So we'll set it to See how far we can get round. We can actually get all the way pretty much. So if you look there, we've actually now gone too fast sharp because we haven't put any uh, sections in there. So we're going to have to put some sections into this to make it actually work properly. It is a concrete track round here as well. I thought it, you know, you sort of think it maybe it'd be wood because it's really old fashioned and not used, but it, uh, I guess they must have relayed it. I think they relayed it when they did the Voyager trials. I'm here in the early 2000s. So this was the curve that used for that. I'm making a right mess of this. Let's try laying it with the yard setting. Or the freight setting. Probably with the freight one. See how that goes for us. Yeah, that's working a bit better. So we've got to remember when we've done this with freight, set on the right hand side, that we change it back to main line because otherwise, in the scenario editor, only trains selected as freight would be able to run down here. And you might think because it is actually in real life a freight only line that that would be alright. But say somebody wants to run a rail tour down here, they might set that rail tour, or any scenario for that matter, to stopping passenger. You could still set a freight to stopping passenger in the scenario editor. Uh, and it wouldn't be able to come down here because it would say, well mate, only freights are allowed down here. Uh, set in the scenario editor. So you want to set that on the right hand side where it says freight, you have to set that to main line. Pretty much in all circumstances. Uh, either mainline or yard. If it's set to yard, for yards obviously that's fine, but uh, for mainline it's for passenger and freight to be able to use it. If you set it to passenger then freight trains can't use it. So I'd say that's okay. What we have to do though is we have to measure the 740 meters that we just laid and we've also got to render these points as well. 
because we haven't done that yet and probably should have done that a lot sooner but uh, seems to be working okay so to end these points you've got the two that we laid there that are adjacent to each other they're all good that's all fine then you'll notice this bit is just some blocked track it's got nothing in it so when we've laid across a track like that what we have to do is then select the weld tool is select the weld tool get this gray box appear over the track we then click the gray box and it'll bring up all the frogs and everything on the track the point work you'll notice that those two are fine but this one's all blocked up and again it's the same as we've done for the other sets of points that have been blocked so we'll need to try and unblock it by clicking these points here and possibly also on that side and that's exactly the case so we've done that there and that's fixed them nicely so that they can uh, be used more adjustment might be done with that later on to be honest uh, I'm not completely 100% happy with it but it'll do for now uh, certainly no major errors with it so you can see there we've got the gradient that we didn't smooth as well so we need to smooth that out and to do that we'll select the track past the end of the point work and where the end of the point work is although it might seem like it's here it isn't it's where the end of the 2d sleepers is so the actual end of the point work is uh, quite a bit further on it's there where it goes back to 3d sleepers so I'm going to select from there across and across there oh, excellent let's change the ballast sound there uh, then we've got that section to smooth out so we're going to press the smooth gradient tool across both tracks and smooth them out for us uh, then what we have to do is we have to measure how far that gradient of 1 in 437 goes. So we've got to select the track on this line here. For 740 metres we were doing it. Which is only two here. So we have to relay all that bit I laid which was about fast. So that's my own stupid fault there for uh, getting ahead of myself. So I will go back and do that now. I don't think it's actually much different gradient. I mean, it's like minus. It's yeah. It's a plot up uphill at one in four two seven in one in, instead of one in four three seven for five hundred seventy nine meters. So not exactly make much difference, but we should do it anyway. It's good practice always to do it properly. So we'll get that down there. I'm just going to go through this hill as well, through that bit there, to make sure we select, to make sure, sorry, that we've got the right um, height on the terrain, so we can build the track uh, without any problems. We go as far as there, uh, and then I'm going to measure it again. There's no real need to smooth that gradient change out because it's so minor, but we might as well anyway. It only changes by 10, but it's always good practice to smooth it out anyway. Just select it, go over the area where we know it changes. Select Smooth Gradient Tool. So the change is here. And we just need to select the track and then measure. We're measuring 579 metres later that gradient. It'll probably be, to, I imagine, it's going to be to where the, um, pretty much up to where the Lancashire and Yorkshire that we laid yesterday, uh, used to what it was yesterday in real life, that we laid in episode 2 was, episode 1 and 2. There. So let's just go back and measure again and then cut where we need to cut. from here sorry it was from up there there it is so from here measure 579 meters just to just there cut the track and then consult the gradient profile once again all right so we got the main one in four two seven section laid across this curve that goes down to the point where we cross the Lancashire and Yorkshire route, the main Wayfield to Nottingham route that we laid the other day. 
in episode one. That goes up to around Crofton East Junction. Um, obviously it's on quite a steep gradient as we know when we laid in episode uh, two. Quite a steep climb up there, that's why it's so far below here, it's uh, quite a drop actually. And next up we've got to put the next gradient in on this bit. We're just going to take it around the corner a little bit. And that gradient is 176 metres of 1 in 290 downhill. I'm going to select concrete 1, minus 290 in the box at the bottom. It's like the end of the track. And then just lay 176 metres. To there. And that should be all fine. Um, and then we've got 257 metres. At minus at one in one in one in one nine four seven uphill. It's one nine four seven uphill. Track concrete a one and that's for two hundred and fifty seven meters. So I'll just go around this curve basically to where the end of the actual section is. To where the um Head shunt is so one in four two seven. The, the links there between the one in four two seven and the one in two ninety. We need to do that in a second. Then we've got the one in nine four one nine four seven, which starts here somewhere. There, and we have to measure two hundred fifty seven meters from that, which is here, and that's where the gradient ends there. So that's the section over the Lancashire and Yorkshire line that we've done. We've got the curve that comes around there as well. And we'll sort that out to another episode. For now what we'll do is we'll just sort out the bits where the we've got the um, gradient changes. We've got another one down here as well haven't we? Yeah here. We'll just select tool, smooth gradient. That takes the big bump out of that one. And then the top of the hill here, which is just before the railway bridge, obviously, and you won't have the gradient really on the bridge, so we'll do it just shy of the bridge. Somewhere there. Select the tracks and then just take it past, uh, and that'll smooth. And that'll sum it out quite a lot. We already did the one up there, so good little bit of track there we've laid. There is a junction still down there that we can do, uh, but we'll do that in another episode because I'm going to be wrapping this one up shortly. It's been uh, quite a long one so far. There's a catch point there by the looks, but train sim doesn't do those quite uh, very realistically, sadly. Snap the terrain around the track again, at least temporarily anyway. The signal for this junction is just there, and it's an LED free aspect signal. Just going to bring the track, uh, the terrain up to the track again, uh, and this signal is WK6827. And it's just a simple. LED free aspect signal, it's got nothing special about it. Uh, I do believe it's on a bit of a gantry, so on a, on a wide post, so we need to find the L3As, which are these ones. Unfortunately, we don't have a 1T wide. Uh, let's see if we can. We might be able to use a signal gantry from the Liverpool to Manchester assets here. to um, do what we're trying to do. Depending on whether there's one actually in here. There we are. So that's an empty uh, ground signal, an empty signal gantry. 
I'm going to see if there's one for the Liverpool to Manchester one. See if there's one any, any that's a bit more updated. There we are. There's one on there. Look. So we got a left and right variety. The left one is if you got if you want the signal to be more to the left. But in this case, we want the signal to be visible more to the right. So we need to use the twin signal right. And we'll put the signal on the right hand side of that gantry. So it's leaning out a little bit. Away from the post. So we're going to use a gantry signal instead of the usual um, posted ones. We'll use the gantry version. So it's a gantry and it's a 1T signal because we need to have a link up on the main line past all the junctions. So we'll do that next. Again, put the first link past the, the initial link past the signal and then the one link needs to be on the main line past the junctions. So all these junctions, it has to be past all of those because there could be any conflicting move come across any of these and if you only placed it again, if you only placed it there it wouldn't be calculating anything that was going to go across this section so you could come out here, have a green signal because you'd only put the link there and something could come out of the depot and smash straight into you so that's why you need to put the link up past all those junctions so the signal calculates if there's anything coming out here anything going across there or anything straight up it checks all of those then Basically, it's checking there's a clear path between this initial link and the one link, and that there's nothing going to cut that, or nothing scheduled to cut it. And we'll put the signal on the gantry. WK6827, I think I said it was. Yep, 6827. I'm going to move this back closer. And also the mileposts have changed now because we're on the Midland and a Midland route. Mileposts on the low L and Y are to Manchester 40 odd miles. Milepost here is 182 and that's to St Pancras as far as I know. So again we'll put another TPWS ramp in there. Got that placed. And next up we need to put the AWS in. Um, 180 metres away. So, just there is where the AWS ramp needs to go. Place it facing the wrong way to start with because the terrain's not up to the track. And just turn it around. Hold shift to turn that arrow so it faces the uh, correct way. And that is another signal placed on this junction. So now freights uh, will hold here. So the train that goes down here most regularly is the Monk Burton Sand train. It runs about three or four times a week. Uh, quite often, about half eight in the evening, I see it stood at this signal when I go down the main road that goes underneath here. Uh, quite regularly see it there. So we've got quite a bit of track done today. In this episode, we've got a few signals done. We've got all those signals in, which is uh, good. Uh, I think that'll bring episode number four to a halt. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Any questions once again, just uh, drop them in the comments, I'll try and answer. There is one thing I was supposed to do, actually, in episode four, which I will do before I finish. Uh, and this one's thanks to a comment from um, one of our followers. Have a look, see if we can find out who it was. Just looking at the video that we did in episode one. It was a comment on episode one. And it was a comment about laying platforms. So the comment was by Intercity125 on episode one. And he asked how to uh, they asked how to put a platform in the route. Now it's nothing to do with Right now, we've got no time, we've got no plans at the minute to be putting platforms in. So, let's say this is a station here. Um, as unusual that might sound, we want to offset a platform from the track. So all we do 
is obviously you'd know how long your platform was. You press your select tool, select a length of track, say 85 meters. Press your offset tool, brings the arrows out over here. Turn the arrow so it's facing the other way is generally what you need to do. Just by holding it and pulling it across. Then go across on the loft tab, in the middle tab here, go across to platforms and you'll be faced with a huge selection of different ones. Now, I'm going to use the LM Platform 5L here. There's different ones that you can do. You can use, let's say you've created a custom station like we've got down at Wakefield Kirkgate. So in theory there, what you're seeing there is you've got the platforms already in. But those platforms won't function because there's no pla passengers on them as a natural passenger model. And there's no track markers either. So to what you do to do a full platform is you offset like we're doing here. And you can either do a 5L, 7L, 9L, whatever sort of size, 3L platform you want. But there's two different types. So the 5L will give you a platform that's close to this, normally facing the track if you point the arrow outwards. And in this instance it already has a passenger set allocated to it. You can see the little pink lines that go around it, they indicate that it's got passengers on it. Also the yellow dots that's on it as well. So we've offset that there. We offset it a bit wide actually, so we probably need to bring that a bit closer. And what you would do is you would go into Scenario Editor, place a train on the track and then gauge where exactly the platform needs to be. You can raise it up, lower it, whatever. As long as it's got these yellow dots on it, that means it's got platform passengers actually selected. Um, if you use some others, you'll find that there's, an, an, such as this one here, an MP. Offset again, flick the arrow outwards. Let's say you use this one that says NP. That means no passengers. So you'll note with this one, it's got no yellow dots and stuff on it. That tells you that there's no passengers placed. Now you can still get passengers on that platform. And the way you do that is, select tool again, select your track. Offset the exact same way as if you were just placing a platform like that. And then you place an invis one. So you've got different ones. You've got JT inv ones, they're invisible. And invis. And what invis means is it means invisible. Um, and what it places is an invisible platform. So you can see those light blue arrows and stuff, and the yellow dots are the key thing. That tells you that you've placed an invisible platform. Now, what an invisible platform is, is it is not a physical platform that you see but it's what spawns the passenger characters and enables you to load passengers at the station and stuff like that. Um, the final step of creating a platform is you make sure you put your platform marker in so it can be used in scenarios. So you go to uh, route building, tools, your signal track infrastructure section, go down to marker, platform, press it on the track and then just drag it to where it needs to be. And then you put in whatever, platform two, for instance, uh, in your route you must make sure that this marker here, the bottom one, is unique. So if you set all you did all your stations and tried to name all platform two without a name before it, like I don't know, Crofton, it wouldn't let you do it unless it was unique. So you need to make sure your platform names are unique. That's basically how you do a platform, it's pretty easy. We'll go through it in more detail when we actually get to an episode where we're placing platforms. But that short shows it in brief. Um hopefully it's of some use. So I hope you've enjoyed episode 4, and we're going to continue in episode 5, probably doing some more track, because we've got a lot to do around here, we've got the depot and stuff that we need to lay here, and we've also got a lot more signalling to do yet, through to Nottingley, we've got Nottingley area to lay and stuff like that, uh, but we're certainly making some good progress here. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video guys, don't forget Tom usually streams, Trains in TV uh, is usually live on Tuesdays and Saturdays at 8pm, that's twitch.tv forward slash Trains in TV underscore Tom. Uh, and we do appreciate all your feedback and everything. Please do like, comment, subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Goodbye.